Monitoring is a crucial part of any application. It will let you to respond to incidents, find issues, track the overall availability, and many more things. So, in this video, we will be setting up a basic monitoring system by using Uptime Kuma, which is a monitoring tool that has decent set of features. In our example, we will be monitoring the AWS EC2 server running a super simple web application. Then, we simulate a failure. Once that failure has been detected by Uptime Kuma, we will send a Discord notification on our Discord server. Therefore, we will be getting notified. So further ado, hit the like button and let's get started. Now, first things first, before we start off, we obviously need a dummy website. To handle it, I will be creating a new EC2 instance. In order to keep things simple, I will be using a set of commands. When our instance starts up, these commands will be run with admin privileges. Then, they will perform an update and finally set up an Apache web server. Also, don't worry, these commands will be in the description as well. Now, let's do it. First, we head over to the EC2 section in the AWS console. Then, we hit on Launch Instance. After that, we name our instance. In this case, let's name it My Sick Instance, because it will become unhealthy later on. Anyways, we will leave it in Amazon Linux 2 AMI with 64-bit version. Then, we make sure that it is a T2 micro instance, because we want to stay in the free tier. Next, we choose a key pair. If you don't have any, you can create from here, or don't use one, which is not recommended. Moving on, we have the network section. There, we create a new security group and make sure that we allow HTTP traffic, because this will become the protocol that we will configure our health checks. Then, we leave storage as is and go to the advanced details. We scroll all the way to the bottom and in the user data, we paste our commands. Just like that. And finally, we launch our instance and wait for it to run. Once it's running, we can check if it is working properly by copying this public URL and simply going to it. Okay, perfect. Now we are ready to set up Uptime Kuma. To do it, we have few options. In this page, we can see that we can either use Docker or non-Docker alternative. Both steps are pretty straightforward. However, to keep things even simpler, I will be using the Docker. Therefore, if you want to follow along, I suggest you to install the Docker first. Anyways, to use Docker, we need to copy this command. Then, we start up the Docker. Once we make sure that the Docker desktop is running, we paste this command into our terminal. This command will pull the uptime Kuma image from the repository and create a container for us. So, it may take a bit of time. Once that's done, we fire it up by using the command docker start uptime kuma. Now it is up and running. So we head over to the localhost 3001 and there we go. At this point, we are ready to create an account and proceed with our first monitor. So let's quickly create a demo account and once we are completed, we should see our dashboard. Perfect. Now let's add our first application. We click on add new monitor and there we see a bunch of configuration options. So let's quickly go over them. First, we have the monitor type. This is where we choose our communication protocol. As you can see, we have multiple options like HTTP, HTTPS, ping, TCP port, and even specific monitor types like Steam Game Server, which is pretty neat option. However, in this example, we will be using HTTP. So I will be choosing this. Moving on, we have the friend name option. So imagine having multiple monitors within the same dashboard. In such case, identifying each monitor can be a bit challenging. Therefore, we can specify each with a name. In this case, let's say dummy application. Next up, we have the URL option, which is pretty self-explanatory. We just plug our application URL in there. So we copy it and paste it, just like that. Then we got the heartbeat interval. Just like the name suggests, it will be the variable that specifies the health check rate. By default, it checks in every minute. In this example, we don't want to wait a lot, so let's change it to 30 seconds. After that, there is this retry option. This will determine how many consecutive unhealthy retries will trigger a service as down. So let's change it to 3, which means that after 3 unhealthy responses, it marks our application as unhealthy, therefore sending a notification. And as we speak about notifications, let's set that up as well. To do it, we look on the top right corner and click on Setup Notification button. There, we see the notification type. As you can see, we have a bunch of options, but today we will be using Discord. So I choose that. Then, as usual, we give it a name. So let's call it Discord Notification. Next, we have an important part, which is the Discord webhook URL. This is how Uptime Kuma will communicate with the Discord. To obtain an URL, we first need to head over to the Discord. There, we need to create a server. So I hit the plus and follow along with the instructions. Once that's completed, we head over to the server settings and under the integration section, we click on create webhook. I'll leave everything as is and copy the webhook URL. After that, I switch back to Uptime Kuma and pass the copied webhook URL. Next, we can name our bot. So I put health bot and as a message, let's say the website is down. 
go check it out. We'll leave the rest as is and hit the test button. And as you can see, we got a message in Discord, which means that everything is working properly. So we save it. As for this example goes, we don't need additional configurations such as authentication. So I'll leave these settings as is and save it. Now our monitor has been properly configured. At this point, we are ready to simulate an outage. But before doing that, I want to show you a great feature of Uptime Kuma, and that is creating a simple status page. All we have to do is create a new status page, then give it a name and a slug. So let's say dummy status and dummy. Next up, we can create a group or just add a single monitor. Group is useful when your application has multiple services. Although we have a single one in this case, just add a group so that we can see it, like so. And finally, choose our monitor and save it. Now, whenever we go to this URL, we see our application status, which is pretty neat. Anyways, now let's simulate a failure. First, we go back to our monitor so that we can see what is happening in detail. Then, we head over to the AWS and terminate our instance. Now, our website is officially down. After that, we just sit and wait for outage to be detected by Uptime Kuma. As you can see, we first see the pending status, which means that the failure is detected and now we are in the retry phase. After 3 retries, it should mark our website as down and send a notification to the Discord. And there we have it. As you can see, it works just like as we expected. And that's it, this is the Uptime Kuma in a nutshell. So I hope you enjoyed it and find it helpful. If that is the case, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And until next time, take care.